Math 43, I thought we would take a look at this bonus problem to help you with this week's discussion. My, my recommendation would be to pause the video, try and do as much of this problem as you can on your own, and then come back and see how you're doing. So I'm going to start by reading this problem, right? The age of cars in the staff parking lot of a suburban college is uniformly distributed from six months to nine and a half years. So a whole bunch of stuff just in that sentence pops out. The first thing I notice is uniformly distributed. That buzzword stands out to me. And then I see the age of cars. There is my variable. So there's the, the very first question I always wanna ask, right? What is my variable? Well, it's the age of cars. And because it's numerical, it should have units attached to it. And if I take a look at the wording here, I see six months and nine and a half years. And I need those units to be consistent, so I'm gonna go with the years. So my units for this numerical variable are years. And when I think about age, I would measure age, so that would be a continuous numerical variable. And I know it's uniformly distributed, so I would say my variable is uniformly distributed. It's low is 0.5, right? The, the youngest car in the staff parking lot is half a year old, and the oldest is nine and a half years old. So then we get asked to sketch the graph of the probability distribution. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got probability along the y-axis. I've got my variable along the x-axis. And so I'm gonna go ahead and write this out. We've got age of cars here. And like I said, my units are gonna be years. And then I've got probability along the y-axis. I do need to have scales on here, right? So when I say label, and scale, so far we've labeled, all right? You see me labeling my y-axis with probability and the variable on the x-axis, but I do need to scale things out, I need numbers. And so I know the low and high here are 0.5 and 9.5. And because it's a uniform probability, I can try my best, I can make a rectangle there. And anytime we have a rectangular distribution, we really wanna know what is this base value here? And base is just the spread or really the range. So if I take a look at my high minus low, right, or let me actually go ahead and get my range, I would do 9.5 and I would subtract out 0 0.5 and that would get me nine, okay? So my range here on the x-axis is nine years. And with any uniform distribution, the reciprocal always lines up your y-axis. So because my range is nine years, my height on the y-axis will be one-ninth of a year, or not one-ninth of a year, one-ninth in terms of probability. So now you can see if we're keeping track of things I've done. I've labeled my axes, right? We see the labels here, yeah? And I've also scaled my axes, and we see the scale here, here, and here. All right, so I've got all of that going for me. So that's my basic PDF. All right, now let's go into some problems. It says, find the probability that a randomly chosen car in the lot was less than four years old. Shade the area of interest on the PDF and properly label and scale. So I hear probability. So I'm gonna be shading some kind of area under the curve. Let me go ahead and get my, my PDF labeled and scaled. So this was the age of cars, years, right? And we were gonna go from half a year to nine and a half years. Let me go ahead and make my rectangle, something like that. And the y-axis was one ninth. Okay, so I want the probability, so capital P, and I need some stuff in parentheses. And if you ever hear me refer to a probability statement, let me spell this out, probability statement. This is, this is a probability statement, capital P with some stuff in parentheses. So we need that the age was less than four years old. All right, that is my probability statement. It usually comes letter, symbol, number. Not all the time, but a good chunk of the time. All right, so I want the probability that x is less than four. Now, because I'm on a uniform distribution, I'm gonna go with base times height. I know the height is one ninth. That's what it means to have a uniform distribution. That's always gonna be the same. I just need to get the base. That's a little cramped. Let me go ahead and give myself a little bit more space. So when I talk about the base, it'll be a high minus low, it'll be another range. It's just gonna be a different rectangle, right? This, this right here, overall rectangle. Now let's go ahead and shade in 
the probability that x is less than 4. So let me start inside the parentheses with x being less than 4. As I come across the x-axis, I think 4 is somewhere around here. That would be my guess. Let me get a different pen color, right? So I think that's around x being four years if I had to kind of eyeball it. And because this says less than, I'm going to shade to the left. All right, so here is my shaded yellow rectangle looking good. And what we need is the base for this. Now the base is not nine anymore. The base is still high minus low. So when I look at it, my high of the shaded area is four. My low is 0.5, and that's what I'm going to put in these parentheses. So I have 4 minus 0.5 here, and when we crunch that number, that's going to be 3.5. I'm going to multiply that by 1 ninth, and then we're going to get about 39%, somewhere in there. And that, that lines up, that number lines up with what I've shaded, right? It's definitely, if I look here, this is less than half of the overall rectangle, and that was less than half. So those are lining up pretty good. I'm feeling fine with that. All right, so now let's get into a trickier one where it says out of just the cars that are less than seven and a half years old, find the probability that a randomly chosen car is less than four years old. So if you take a look at this, right, we have that of here. This is a conditional probability. So you have to think to yourself, out of all of those cars in the parking lot, we're going to narrow it down to just the cars that are less than seven and a half years old. And out of whatever those cars are, right, out of that condition, then what's the probability that a car I choose was less than four years old? So if we think back to chapter three, we have the probability of A given B. There was that formula that it's the probability of A and B over the probability of B. And B is always the condition. So if we look at this, this is going to be the probability that, again, given that my car is less than seven and a half years old, right, there's the condition, what's the probability that it's less than four years old? So if I play out my A and B formula, this is going to be the probability that X is less than four and less than seven and a half over the probability that X is less than four. Okay, so we can start to take a look at this. I want to, on the side here, think about these two statements, X being less than four and X being less than seven and a half, and think about where those overlap. So let me go to the number line, and we're going to graph out x being less than 4, and I'm also going to graph out x being less than 7.5. And the reason I'm doing this, this overlap, is because that's what an and is, right? Where do we have things in common? So let me start graphing out things like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on this number line, so 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, and I just picked numbers close to four and seven and a half. So I think about X being less than four. I would start there with an open dot and I would shade to the left, right? And if I think about X being less than 7.5, I would start with an open dot here and again, shade to the left. Now, where do those overlap? Well, let's take a look. I'm gonna use a different pen color. You can see that these two start to overlap here. Right, on the x being less than 4 and then all the way down there. And what that's saying is if I have to have a number that is at the same time less than 4 and less than 7.5, it just that's the stronger statement, so it's going to have to be less than 4. So what I'm getting here is that this is the probability that x is less than 4 over... Um, oh, actually, I can see a typo. Maybe you've seen it ahead of time with me. So let me, let me show you a typo. And the reason I knew I was about to get a typo is because I was about to write this, and that is not correct. So here's what I mean by that. If I look at my B, and this is a good thing to point out, right? X was less than 7.5 here, and that, that's playing the role of B. So it should have gone in this position, in this position. And you see, I did put it here, but I did not put it there. So I need, to, I need to fix that. So this down here should have said less than 7.5. So let me fix that. And then let me erase this down here and put less than 7.5. And now I know I have a, a probability that's working. So whew, we're still not there. This, these problems always take a little while. So these are both going to be base times heights, but they're just going to be different bases. So if I think back to my original PDF, and let me go ahead and draw this in here, right? We were going from 0.5 to 9.5, 
right? And I had a uniform height here of one ninth. And let's think about x being less than four. And, and we're gonna go ahead and graph that out. And if you're thinking, I already found that probability back in part B, I, I agree, but I just wanna review that idea. So I would go to four here, right? And I would say, well, I wanna shade all of this stuff. But really, that base there is 4 minus 0.5. So let me go write that in. This is going to be on the numerator, 4 minus 0.5 times that height of 1 ninth. Right? And then on the denominator, I need to do 7.5. So let me go ahead and pick a different pen color. And let's get to 7.5, which will be over here. And then this base would involve 7.5 minus 0.5. So let me go ahead and write that in. So now I've got 7.5 minus 0.5 times that height, that uniform height of 1 ninth. You can see that numerically, these are gonna cancel out. On my numerator, I'm gonna have 3.5. On my denominator, I'm gonna have seven. So ultimately, this thing is 50%. And it takes a lot of work to do those conditional probabilities. Those are probably, or I wouldn't say probably, but in my opinion, they're the trickiest problems in there. All right, so D and E are asking us to find the mean and standard deviation. So we have formulas for that. Right, we've got a plus b over two here, and then we've got the square root of b minus a squared over 12 here. So my low in this problem was 0.5, my high was 9.5. So my average, if I take a look at it, the average age of those cars in the staff parking lot is five years. And when I crunch this number on my calculator, let's see, this would be 9.5 minus 0.5 squared over 12. So if, you, if you're careful with your calculator, and I say be careful because there's so many parentheses in there that it, it could um, lead to a little typo, but you should be getting 2.598 years. And if you have trouble getting there, what I would recommend is going a step at a time. Like the first thing I would do in my calculator is just take nine and a half and subtract 0.5 and then you should get to nine. And then the next thing I would do would square that. I would square that number, right? And then I would divide it by 12. And then I would take the square root of that number. So when things get complex like that, I tend to just do one entry in my calculator at a time so that I, I have less of a chance of making a typo. All right, we got one more problem here. It says find the third quartile for the ages of cars in that lot and let's shade the appropriate region. All right, so you know me, I'm gonna go ahead and make my rectangle. All right, this is gonna go from 0.5 to 9.5. We got again, X against probability. And we've got the age of cars here down on our X axis and our unit is years. And we have said that our uniform height is 1 ninth. Now I would like the 75th percentile. That is what the third quartile is. So let me go ahead and get a different pen color here. I, actually, let me back this up. I know the midpoint here is five. We found out up here that the mean was five years, so that's gonna be right in the middle. All right, and that would then, if I was going here, this is the 50th percentile. So if I want the 75th, it's gonna be somewhere in there. So let me get, like I said, a different pen color. Let me erase all my little doodles here, and I will pick up, we'll go with pink. So I think this, is just about the 75th percentile. Okay, and then I wanna shade all the way to the left of that. And I could almost guess what this is gonna be, but I do wanna go through all of the math behind it. All right, in case I give you a percentile that's not as nice as 75th. All right, so if I wanna go with this, I'm gonna use that the base times the height has to equal 0.75. That's how we always work these. Now the height's uniform. So I'm gonna do base times 1 ninth equals 0.75. So ultimately I need to divide both sides by 1 ninth to solve for the base, right? So I'm gonna divide by 1 ninth here, divide by 1 ninth here. But when you divide by 1 ninth, that's like multiplying by nine. So I'm gonna get 0.75 times nine and I'm gonna get 6.75. And this is usually where students stop and it's not the correct answer. You're on the right track but it's not correct because what this is saying, and I'm gonna change pen colors here to denote it, this base, that in and of itself needs to be 6.75 years. So this base has to be 6.75, this whole thing here. But don't forget, you're starting at 0.5. So our X value here needs to be 6.75 units down from this starting point 
of half a year. So really, if I want to find my base, or I should say my x value, you need to take 0.5 and add 6.75 to it to get to, oops, excuse me, 7.25. That is the right answer. Because if this number, and let me again color code it, if this number is 7.25 here, then high minus low, that range, if I did 7.25 minus 0.5, that would get me the 6.75 that I needed to get to the 75th percentile. Okay. All right. So there is your bonus problem. Thank you for sticking with it. I hope it